it's Rachel. I am finally here. I could not get my, I'm going to drop this down a little bit. I could not get my phone to turn sideways in landscape mode no matter what I did. So I turned it off and I reset it. I'm sorry I'm late. I did stick a note up on the, um, on my page that I had to restart the phone. Ugh, technology is not my friend. Anyhow, um, we're going to finish up. Hey, Linda, we're going to finish up uh, this um, hutch this evening. Uh, today's day seven of the seven days of lives. I have made it. Um, I will probably also go live tomorrow night um, as well so I can finish up the um, final bits and pieces of this. I mixed um, a custom color. Hey, Maggie. I mixed a custom... Um, Hey, Lisa. Um, top coat. What I ended up doing is I'm using, because I really like that super flat look. Um, I love our big top, but I wanted a flat look for this, uh, for this piece. And um, yes, you made it this evening. Hey, Tammy. Um, so, um, hey, Maggie. Um, so, what I did was I wanted to play with this a little bit because I wanted to give it, I wanted to add some gold to this. Um, just to kind of like highlight it a little bit. But um, what I did was I took my golden ticket. I used um, my Sweet Pickens Milk Paint um, Top Coat, um, which is universal. You can go um, over our DIY uh, paint with this. And um, it, this is a water-based top coat, and it's non-toxic, no VOCs, or low VOCs. Um, and as I said, it's low odor. It, I can't. It, that, to me, there's no smell to it, um, but, um, and, um, so I took this because I want that flat look like wax gives you, but I wanted it to have, um, uh, and I may end up waxing even over the top of it when I'm done with everything, but, um, I still wanted that super flat look. So I took this and I put in a container, um, and I have it in the gallon here because I'm a, a retailer of Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. Um, and we are let, we're able to purchase it in a gallon, but I do sell it in the four and, um, 16 ounce sizes. So I took it and I filled it up to the 12 ounces, um, in this container here. This I just got from Lowe's. And, um, the reason why I put it in here is because if there's any leftover, there's, they have little lids for them. And then I added, um, uh, my DIY golden ticket to this, um, I took and added three teaspoons of the golden ticket to, um, which is our, it's a, it's a liquid patina and it, it is a sealer all in itself, um, like a top coat would be. Um, but I added this to that mixture and I stirred it up really good. And, um, so I would have, even though it's flat, just a little bit of, um, a shimmer to it. Um, I didn't want like it glossy, just that golden shimmer to it. Anyhow, and I added it to the bottom section here only. Um, we're gonna paint some of the other areas, but um, the reason why I wanted to do that is because I think I wanted to do, um, added a transfer. I don't wanna do a whole lot to this uh, piece because it is a display piece and I don't want it to be, uh, whatever I do to it, hidden. But, um, so I got out my IOD, um, it might be backwards looking at it. I think it is reversed, but I don't know how to, I'll have to ask, uh, one of my friends how, um, I hit that, like, there's supposed to be a way that you can, or a button you can, um, push so that it, it, uh, makes it so you don't, it's not backwards. I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, but anyhow, this is the Iron Orchid Designs Winter Song um, wreath. This is one of their, uh, painted transfer series. Um, you don't have, you can leave it black and white or you can, um, paint, um, when you put it down, you can paint in between, like a coloring book. Um, we call these, uh, Brianna calls, uh, the transfer stickers for grownups. Um, and she's right on. Um, but this one you can paint, um, your stickers. Um, anyhow, it comes with, it's a four sheet, and um, so you've got the, the wreath here, and you can cut it up and use the transfers in any which way you want. And then it's got four um, separate little flowers here um, in the corners. So I was thinking about putting this here um, in the center of, um, through the different sections, you know, top and bottom, what have you not, and then putting, just the way it's laid out, putting the uh, corner flowers 
you know, up here and there. So we're going to apply uh, one of the bottom pieces, I think, to um, the sections down here. That's why I applied the top coat to the bottom section so we can do some of this together. Um, but if you look at the bottom of this here, you can see how you can, once you put it down, you can um, color in um, with your paints in the lines and stuff like that, or out of the lines, uh, this transfer. Um, and DIY paint is, um, because it's clay-based and it's so heavily pigmented, um, you can water it down 10 to 1 and you still will not lose um, any of the color. It is so heavily saturated um, with those pigments um, that you can use it for watercolor. Um, it, the paint is amazing. Anyhow, and again, as I have said multiple times, it is um, low. Or let me grab the backs of the can right quick so you can see. There's no uh, VOCs and... Um, there's nine, just nine ingredients. And hey, Kimberly, um, in the DIY paint that it is made obviously with love. Um, and we are a person and, you know, company first, people to people versus we would rather care about the person than the money first. Um, and it is water, clay, porcelain clay, chalk, alcohol, ester as a binder, cellulose, pigments, and preservative. And this little can here, um, it is 16 ounces, and it does 70 to 75 square foot. Now, if you thin it out, I use my fine mist water sprayers. You guys had seen me do uh, as we painted this piece over this last week. And you can get even more out of that depending on how thin or how thick you want to do it. You, this is also a paint that you can build amazing texture with. So even if it dries out, um, you can reconstitute it with adding some water to it. Um, and build some of the most gorgeous texture ever. Anyhow, um, but um, so this paint is what we used on this piece and um, I've got my, we're gonna go here, I've got the top coat that I did here. Hey Francesca! Um, and we're going to, I'm gonna show you how I apply this. As I said earlier in one of the lives this, this week, I keep a set of brushes. Um, oh, thank you very much. Um, I use a set of brushes for my paint and then I use another set of brushes for um, anything that's got a patina or a top coat in it. I try to keep everything separate um, just just to keep it because they different uh, materials in the uh, ingredients or different ingredients in the products. Anyhow, um, so I'm going to bring you guys around and uh, we're going to start sealing up on one of the sides so you can see how this um, mixture is with the top coat and the uh, um, golden ticket added to it. And then um, if I think this one side is dry enough, we'll be able to apply one of the uh, corner sections for the IOD. All right, guys, I'm going to bring you around this way here. Let's see here. Um, let's see if I can get you. You can see this here. Okay. All right, let's see here. One of the videos, um, it, I kept, I went back and I looked at it and all you see is like the back of me and a good section of it. And then, uh, last night's video, um, it said I have a copyright violation, um, and they had to remove the sound. I just saw that, um, they said they had to remove the sound out of the video. Um, and I'm like, there's no music to it. Um. Does the Clinton Rush clean the same? Clinton Rush clean the same when you use a patina or a top coat? Do you mean the Klingon brush? Um, I think that's what you mean. Does the Klingon brush clean the same when you use a patina or a top coat? No, I would not leave it in the water when you leave uh, when you use a top coat uh, with a Klingon brush. Yeah, that's what I was thinking you were meaning. Um, I was like Clinton Rush. Wait, huh? Um, but no, I would um, not leave it in water. I would wash it right away um, because the clay, when, like you can even, even after you've used the Klingon brush and um, it has, um, like I have left, um, it, and I did it even one that wasn't even on a, a Klingon brush um, and I had forgot about it. It was the black velvet um, DIY paint and after, um, it had sat for like a week. I hadn't been downstairs to paint some stuff 
I don't remember what had gone on, but I had forgot about the brush. Um, I was able to still clean the brush with just some water and um, some soap. Debbie's I got a uh, brush cleaner that is amazing. Um, it's in a, it's got a little grate in it too. Um, and I used, I don't know what the, what the soap is that's in it, but it's meant for brushes. And, um, I've got it on my site and, uh, it's in a disc and I was able to get it all out of, um, the brush and it didn't ruin the brush. Um, but I would absolutely not, um, leave the patina or any type of top coat, on the Klingon brush in the water, I would wash it first because it's got that self sealer in it and it that will not um, reconstitute itself or, um, you know, um, it'll harden and that'll ruin the bristles. Kind of like what you do, you mean to put it on the top. Okay, so this is my mixture here. I don't know if you guys can see. I don't want to spill it all, but I don't know if that helped at all or not. Let's see if I can get, let's see if I can do this. Haha, -ha, there we go. Um, so this is, again, I put 12 ounces of the, um, um, Sweet Pickens top coat. It is super flat, um, in here. And then I did three teaspoons of the Golden Ticket. Um, and this is, um, one of Debbie's older brushes and it's an, it is a natural, or it is not a natural, it is a, um, synthetic, um, bristle on here. Let's see if I can get up, um... And then, um, as I move down, I try to make, when I seal something, even strokes across the top. I'm getting down there. I just didn't want to start in the middle of the thing, in the middle of the side of the hutch. Let's see here. And, but this is, I love this top coat because I like that flat look. Um, some pieces I don't mind, uh, shiny, but I just like that flat look, whether it's wax or a super flat top coat. Um, I have found though, even when I use, um, a flat top coat that, um, it always needs more, uh, coats of it. Hey, Barbara, um, more, um, Let's see here. I missed the note. Oh, there's Tessa. Glad to see we figured out the filming position. Yes, finally. Um, and uh, it was like day five is when I figured it out. And it was, I was typing in the, um, the information when it was in portrait mode and then turning it and it wouldn't accept it. You have to type in your information and your description, all that while it's in landscape mode and leave it there. Um, it won't let you, if you turn it from portrait to landscape, it won't accept it. It keeps it upright. And tonight I couldn't get my phone to actually behave. It was, even though I was turning it in landscape, it would not go. So I reset it. I had to turn off and reset it. So I was a little bit late. Um, but, um, I forgot what I was saying, um, uh, before that. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. But, um, I make short strokes going across. When I seal something, I try to make it, oh, I don't know what I was saying, the um, flat, when it's, um, it seems to be the less shine any, any brand of top coat has, the um, more coats it needs for some reason. I don't know if it's just because um, something that makes it glossier has, um, a hardener in it. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I found that across, you know, universally across the, um, um, board, no matter what the top coat is, but so this will dry super flat and then it will have a little bit of a gold flex in it from the golden ticket that I added to this. It'll have a little bit of a shimmer and then um, in the front where it, um, has dried, we're going to add that IOD transfer. We're going to start adding it. Now, my friend Lisa, uh, she was in the shop today and she's the only one. She was, we were joking how she said she doesn't follow the direction, um, 
because they always say seal it first, you know, with um, any type of a, you know, water-based sealer uh, before you apply a transfer and um, because it won't stick. And I, she was applying um, floral anthology to a piece that um, she's working on in the shop. And, um, and it, it, I was like, well, wait, you've got to seal it first. And she said, no, this is how she always does it. Okay. And I thought for sure it was gonna, you know, buckle up on her and not stick because that's happened to me where I thought I had gotten it completely sealed all the way across. It's actually the piece that's in my kitchen. Um, my, uh, cart that I have, a kitchen cart and, um, it did part of it did not stick and I could not get it to stick because it um, was right on the paint the paint didn't have a sealer that uh, was across it and I just don't know how she does it I have no idea I wish I had that kind of luck because of course the one piece that that happened to why I missed part of the sealer it didn't stick and it wrecked that part of the transfer but you can see how I just go straight across, short strokes. Well, you can't make a long stroke on this side. But uh, even all the way across, I don't know if you guys can see if I can, I don't know if I can move it in any closer. And I don't know if you can see the little bits of the gold. Um, I'm gonna try to lift this up as I go a little bit. And if you can see, can you guys see any of the shimmer in it? Well, I mean, it's not dry at all, but I don't know if you can see the little flecks that are in it. Oops, sorry. Uh, that are in this. But um, I'm going to get this top part of the, the crown part up here. But I used uh, 12 ounces of the Sweet Pickens top coat if you're just joining me. Um, which is a super flat top coat and I'm doing it over the top of the DIY clay-based paint but the, you can use this it's a water-based top coat and you can use it over any type of a surface let's see here all right let's oops I'm stuck I've got cords everywhere all right let's see here and we're gonna see if we can add that transfer let me see if it's dry enough here yeah it is on those sections on those corner sides so I'm gonna open this up here and I'm gonna add that brush I'm putting my see right now I'm setting those brushes in water uh, sometimes it works either way for me I've sealed and sealed and yet yeah, parts didn't stick and I've done it both ways this is Linda let's see here I sometimes struggle with transfers yeah I can understand that completely um, but I don't, I, I've never had luck with it. Um, if it's not sealed, it just, because it's like a, almost like a dust or something that's underneath it. So it's sticking to that. So you ruin the, like it, like Brianna says, the sticker part of the stickiness on it. Um, let's see here. Hold on. I'm grabbing my drink. My mouth is dry. All right, let's get this open. Let's see also if I can drop this down because you guys won't be able to see the, let's see here. Oh, that works. All right, let's see. And if I can get that here and see if I can get it closer this way. There we go. Um, still, we're going to have to drop it again. Hold on a second because I'm having to lower this all the way again. So let's see if we can get it so we can see the... should work the center section isn't dry yet all right guys there we go you won't be able to see my face or you know what we'll do this hold on oh let's see here and we'll raise this up a little bit a little stick part there we go sorry if i'm making y'all sick moving around everything like this all right okay let's see here this side's there we go I'm going to add it right here. Let's see here. We'll do this. Oh, hold on. Oh, moving stuff around. 
try and sit here and we can talk while I'm doing this. There we go. So, here. I'll sit on the... Okay, well, I still can't be seen. Okie dokie. Sort of. We'll put me down there. There we go. All right. So, hopefully, y'all didn't get sick with me moving everything around. Um, I'm opening up the transfer here. Um, one of the things I do... Let me grab my tape right quick. When um, these transfers come in flat pads, so I like that it's stuck. All right. So I like because the sheets and because if they stick, you're committed to where it's at. Especially if you put it on glass. All right. So they. Here's one of the pads, one of the four quarters of it. That one looks like it would be the top right here. And then what I like to do though is before I know where I'm sticking it and what I'm doing is I take a piece of painter's tape here and let's see if I can put this down here on my lap all together. And I take it here and I tape the front to the back like that so that I don't lose this back side of it. Let's see here. Because I don't want to take the chance of it coming apart and not being able to actually stick on the surface that I want it to. Because that's my kind of look. Let's see here. There we go. I'm going to set these down here. All right. So there's that one, which looks like it is the top right corner. And then this one looks like it is the um, bottom right which is, I think, the one that we're going to end up doing tonight. Hold on. And I usually end up cutting my transfers out in sections. Um, even if it's I end up using the whole transfer, it's just easier for me to handle. And after I take them and I tape them apart like this and take it apart the thing and I tape them in sections like this, I think that's the one, the bottom right one. Um, I will take them and lay them out on whatever piece I'm doing. While I do this here, I'll, I'll talk to you guys. Um, while I am um, laying it out on whatever piece I'm going to put it on, um, I tape it to, even with the back on it, I'll tape it to the piece that I'm putting it on um, before I take the back off of it. Um, and then I take only when I know that's exactly where I decide I want it and I'm happy with my layout. Um, and sometimes it takes me a little bit to look at it. And if it's a big piece, I may tape it down um, with the pieces like that. And um, I may, um, that one I think is the upper left. Um, I may uh, look at it for a couple of days first, you know, and pass by it and look at it and, you know, just make sure that that's what I really want. And uh, once I decide on that, then I'll take off the little sections um, one at a time and I take just the back off. Um, so I'll pull it off and I'll, I'll show you guys where I'll take it down and pull off just that one little section and... Um, and sometimes I end up taping down the whole, all four sides of just the top piece, just so that it doesn't move on me or shift or, uh, all right, so let's see here. I'm going to look at the back of this. And I use the back as reference, especially if you're using a paint inlay, because those you have to cut and match up um, because the designs are so close together. These two, let's see here. This one looks like it is um, the 
bottom left, I believe, is what this one is. Nope, that's not it. Um, okay, this is the top left. All right, that's top left. So I'm going to put that one up here. That is top left. And then let's see what this one is. Let's see. This one is the... Um, top right is what that one looks like. It matches here. Right, top right. And then this one here is the... That's in that corner there. And this would be the yeah, bottom left. And then this is the only one that's left. This is the... This one here. The bottom right. And this is the one we'll work on here. I'm going to grab my scissors. Um, right here. And I am going to take another piece of tape here so I can tape down the sides that I cut off. On both sections once I cut them out. Let's see here. And what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to use just this side here of this, I'm going to cut this out and then tape down the sides again so that it won't come off of the bag. So I've got that so that it won't. See how that's all secured all the way around? All right. And then I have this piece here. Here we go. All right. So I've got this here. And I'm going to put you guys right up here. There we go. This whole piece I'll tape out and I'll put there and see how I like that. Like that there. And I might be able to back you guys up a little bit here and Raise you up and back you up. Hold on. So you can see the. Let's see. There we go. Hold on. Because then I can play with where I'm going to put all of it at. I'm going to cut this apart here for this side. this piece here at the bottom left one and let me get this section whoop wait no oh, this one there we go and then that one will go here well hold on a second this one is that there, so I'm talking to myself and to you guys. I usually, well, if you were to come down this basement, you will hear me talking and there's nobody here. It's just me. Um, I kind of want to put it, see, I think that that would be, I may end up cutting it straight across in the center here. And putting part of it here and part of it down here so that it will um, fit where you can see the, the wreath in the center. That's what I may end up having to do. We'll put that here for right now and see what your guys' opinion is on that. Because that, what do you guys think? Because if I end up, I'll piece it all up there, but... If I were to do that, would look, I think, funny if it was just here because it's not center and then the wreath there. But if we 
split it where a quarter of each of these sheets were on the bottom section here, and then the other quarter of it would be up here, and then take these here and split them um, where we've got a quarter of this here, so you've got part of the wreath here and the other quarter of it up there, so you've got a quarter and then a total of a half and then a quarter down there on the bottom. You think split it, Lisa? All right. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna cut this up too. Let's see here. Has anybody that's on here not um, ever used a transfer or has any questions on that I can answer to uh, help you in terms of applying one? Or do you have any fears about applying one? Let's see here. That one's got it. All right. It goes there. Let's see. Oh. Let's see here. Does anybody have any questions about DIY paint? Or any of the process that I've done so far? Let's see here. All right. And then there's that one, and then that would be there. So this would be the ideal. Then I agree with you, Lisa. I think it needs to get cut and then split. And you see how here you would have to, if it's going all directly together, like this top part will fit together. Um, but you have to, you'll end up marrying those up where the piece is end up going together like that so it'll be one continuous wreath all together and uh, you cut the you can cut the edge here or when you apply the one you can then match the other one up when the grid is down next to it like that here on a on a piece all right so what I'm gonna do I will end up cutting those and splitting them apart at a later time probably this evening um, but I will do because it'll be you know with all the cutting and measuring and what have you not it'll take quite a bit of time but what I'm going to do is bring you in and we are going to apply the corners like they've got here and I think do you guys like them out like they are right now, or do you think they should be in in closer or out further? What do you guys like? I like them where they're set out, you know, about an inch out, like where this one is here on the back corner. Let's see if I can get that where I can tip that. There you go. I like this where this is set out like this instead of bringing it in even closer or even further out right in the corner. All right, guys. Okay, let's see if I can, just like it is, is perfect. All right, Lisa. Let's see if I, I don't want to block everybody's view from, because I seem to have done a good job of blocking, my head blocking up everybody's view. All right, so I'm gonna take off the back of these here. And I'm going to apply this right here, stick it down.
There we go. I'm fine. Thanks, Maggie. And then the the little, I don't know what they call it, but it's an application stick. It's plastic. They used to be wood. And after you put the transfer down, you rub this on to where the image is at. And it will come off and transfer onto the surface that you're applying it to. And it becomes lighter. And that's how you know that that part has stuck. off of here slowly coming off and something that's nice about these transfers is um, when you're using them let's see there you go you see how that just comes off that I love the grid that's on these Hold on. I'm in a really awkward position trying to scrape this or scratch this down here and pull it off let's see here but IOD has a very fine halo. It's the, the smallest halo in, on any transfer on the market. And that means it's that means the outside edging from the transfer, the transition from the actual transfer uh, to the surface that it's being applied to. Which means that it's if you were to blend it into paint, that the halo is so fine that you wouldn't see it. It's, let's see here. Let's see, I got that piece of paint off. Sometimes you can get um, like a rub a, get a bubble into it and ride the, some people call it riding the wave. See if you can see how, you see how that's happening like that? And it lays it down easier. It just, well, not so easier, but sometimes it lays it down more all at one time. Where, I don't know if you can see where it's doing that, where it's, can you see where that, how that's happening? Something that's nice about this, I went to say it a minute ago, is that you can pull it up and if for some reason there's a section that has not gotten not like stuck, you can lay it right back down and re-adhere it. So it's as if, you know, if you make a boo-boo, it will go right back into place. Almost done, guys. Let's see here. And then after you apply a transfer, you want to burnish it down. And you can do that with a piece of this actual um, film that it's attached to. Let's see here. Some of this 
this isn't stuck yet. I'm going to take the, if I got my scissors, no, I was going to cut that edge off. There's a piece there that didn't come up. There it goes. Now it's stuck. There we go. All right. So then I'm going to take this here and I'm going to burnish that down, which just means rubbing it down onto the surface there. And something you need to be careful with, where's the, I had scissors, there they are, let's see here, is that when you're burnishing down a piece of, um, or part of the transfer, is you don't want to catch it with the edge, because that'll snag it. So I always try to round my, round my pieces here. around my fingers. There you go. And then once the transfer is on, once the transfer is on, let's see if I can sit so you can see me this way. Once the transfer is on, you want to um, seal it again and you can seal it with another top coat or you can seal it with wax um, whichever you prefer um, you just can't put down an oil based first and then adhere that to it so if you are sealing it with a wax first and then um, are putting the transfer down um, because it's an oil based it will not stick um, same with if you used um, like sweet pickens hemp oil or oil wax, it will not stick, or their beeswax. Now you can use that um, on top of it, you can use the uh, beeswax on top of that if you wanted. Same same thing as if you use the DIY wax. All right guys, well, that is all for this evening. Um, I will probably be back on tomorrow, even though it's the eighth day of seven days of lives, and uh, finish up this piece here and just uh, some fine touches with uh, some gilding wax. I'm going to use some of the uh, Golden Rule, um, uh, the DIY gilding wax that we have. And um, then the piece will be all done and it will be ready for the shop. They um, are unpacking today. I spoke with Tracy and I'm super excited. Um, she said, and don't use the grid side because the black can come off on your piece. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I don't know that I've ever tried that, but thank you. Uh, for sharing that, Lisa. Um, I'm assuming that has happened to you before. Um, but um, anyhow, the uh, the uh, it is now not only just stateside from uh, the UK for the Would You Bend products and Posh products, she is actually unboxing it um, and putting it up, uh, my distributor. So I am super excited. So Tracy said it'll be uh, just a few short days and everything will be listed on the site and ready to go. So it'll be in my hot little hands, hopefully by the uh, end of next week. And I'm super, super excited. Just in time. That's why these pieces need to get done. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I really appreciate all of your time uh, with me uh, this week and today. Um, all for all of the paint and products that I've used all week, you can find them at StellaRoseBoutique.co and you can also find them in both of my shops at uh, 524 Justice Drive in Greenville, Tennessee. That is the road. Uh, there's two justices. There's um, J-U-S-T-I-S and J-U-S-T-I-C-E and I'm uh, um, J-U-S-T-I-S and uh, the other one is about half a mile away a lot of people end up it is a residential street i am the road that is between um walgreens and uh, the shell gas station by the hospital um and at 222 call your drive in uh, Sevierville behind fuddruckers all right guys if you have any questions you can always message me um about any of the products 
and I'll be glad to help you. And even if you're stuck, anyhow, uh, thank you again for watching and I appreciate all your time. Have a great evening, y'all. Bye.